Hi guys and welcome to today's YouTube jazz guitar lesson. What you just heard me doing there was uh, improvising over a chord progression using a really cool technique called 1-2-3-5 um, patterns or Coltrane patterns. I was using that with a few of the different techniques over a really common chord progression. Just as a bit of jazz guitar trivia, if you do know what chord progression I was improvising over there, just share that uh, in the comments below and um, let's see who can get the right answer first. Up. So, just comment with the chord progression that you think I was improvising over. So um, that's not the uh, the point of this video. The point of this video is to make a lesson, which explains the technique of uh, the one two three five uh, pattern or the chord train pattern. How you can use it over different chord types and how you can use it to construct some jazz lines. So as per usual, I have got tab annotation for all the stuff we're going to be talking about. So if you want to get um, that loaded up and check it out. Just look below this video in the description box, you'll see a link to um, an article which has everything we're going to be discussing in tab and notation. Um, to coincide with this study of uh, 1235 patterns, there's a really great old um, clip of Joe Pass playing a tune called C -E C -E -D, or said, you know, but I'm not really sure what I meant to say it, but uh, you can check that out on, uh, on YouTube and at the end of the video, he uses this uh, 1235 pattern going up in fourths and I've actually transcribed that and analysed it because it's a really cool flashy um, lick you can kind of um, use to show off with and if you want to check out that lick you can also look below this video because I've got um, a link to an article which has that lick analysed and tabbed out for you to check out as well. So without further ado let's learn how to play 1235 patterns. To begin this lesson we're going to be looking at applying the 1, 2, 3, 5 chord pattern of the three different chord types. Now as I said in the uh, intro, the 1, 2, 3, 5 chord type is um, kind of self-explanatory really to how it's formed. So if we're applying this chord pattern over say a C major 7 chord, it comes from the first degree of a scale, the second, the first and the fifth. 1, 2, 3, 5. Just like that. Um, so that's not too tricky to work out. Um, and the good thing about this one, two, three, five pattern is, because it's not referencing any seventh, we can apply it over a major seven chord, any kind of major seven chord, and we can also apply it over a dominant seven chord because we've got no seventh in there. So it'll work really well over either of those two chords. Now, if you want to apply it over a minor 7 chord, all you've got to do is find the 3rd, 1, 2, 3, and lower it a half step, I'm going to place this on the uh, 11th fret there just for convenience, so I've got 1, 2, flat 3, 5, and that's how you'd apply it over a uh, minor 7 chord, 1, 2, 3, 5, really nice um, sound over the minor 7 chord. Now the final chord type um, which we need to be able to use this chord pattern over is of course the minor 7 flat 5. And now this is a bit of an interesting one because I guess there's a few different ways in which you can amend this chord type. So one, that's not going to change, but the two, sometimes if you think of um, say for example a Locrian scale, that does contain a flat 2. So sometimes when you're applying this pattern over a minor 7 flat chord sorry, a minor 7 flat 5 chord, it's a good idea to flatten the second degree as well, so you've got 1, flat 2, flat 5, flat, sorry, flat 3, flat 5. And if I play that in a higher octave, just so you can hear it, you've got 1, flat 2, flat 3, flat 5. And that's kind of how it would work over a minor 7 flat 5 chord. So that's basically the essence of um, how they're constructed for the different chord types. Um, what you need to do really is um, practice them over different chord progressions that you're working on. Um, actually as well, before we move on, I'd just like to say, you know, with a minus 7 flat 5 um, chord, you may want to keep the 2 as a natural as well, because it doesn't have to be locked in. There's kind of a debate about, you know, can you use flat 9s or natural 9s over a minus 7 chord. Uh, in my experience, Either will work, it just depends. 
which one you like the sound of the most, to be honest. So you can pick and choose um, which one you want to use over the minus 7 flat 5 chord. Now that you understand how each of these 1, 2, 3, 5 patterns work over the different chord types, we can now begin to apply them over um, a chord progression that you're working on. So for the purposes of today's lesson, I'm going to be using um, Blue Bossa as a chord progression that we're going to be applying these patterns to because most um, jazz guitarists know that tune. So Blue Bossa begins with two bars of C minor 7 there. So the um, chord train pattern that you're going to use is going to be uh, the minor one. One, two, flat, three, five. And um, when I'm applying them over this tune, I'm going to be um, using a higher octave than what I showed you earlier, just because it cuts through a bit better. So I'm going to be starting out applying the one, two, three, five pattern to the top three strings of the guitar, starting on the fifth fret of the G string, so, uh, third fret of B, fourth fret of B, and then finally third fret. One, two, three, five. So whenever you learn a new concept in jazz, it could be you know one, two, three, five patterns, three to nine arpeggios, um, whatever the technique may be. You really need to practice it in kind of um, a dull, boring way first, so that you've got the um, the patterns clear and accessible, so you can start to make music with them. You know you've really got to see where they are to begin with. So what I like to get students to do is when they can play a one, one, two, three, five pattern. Just go over blue bossa using that. So for the C minor seven, um, we can play that minor one. We're going to play it in quarter notes. One, two, three, five. One, two, three, five. And then when it goes to F minor seven, we can continue this quarter note thing. So we're going to go. And that'll take us through the first four bars. Again, don't worry about it sounding too musical at the beginning. The trick or the key to this part really is just um, being able to get the right chords and outline the different chords using the pattern. So the next chord in Blue Boss is a D minor seven chord. For this, I'm gonna to stick to using my um, one, two, three, five pattern with the uh, flat nine or the flat two because that's the one that I tend to prefer. I'm gonna start up here going one, flat two, three, flat five. And then for the G chord, just gonna be sticking to a regular one, two, three, five. One, two, three, five. And then finally the C minor seven again, we're back to one, two, three, five. So over the two, five, one, it should sound like this. And that's a really cool thing you can do. So let's have a go playing what we've learned up to press we're going to do the first um, eight bars of the tune I think it is so a one two three four okay so that's the first eight bars the next um, set of uh, eight bars in the other half of the tune, we have a two five one in um, D flat major. So that's E minor seven for a bar, A seven for a bar, and then D flat major seven for two bars. So we can do the same thing: one two three five of the minor seven chord, E flat, G flat, sorry, E flat, F, G flat, B flat. Then over the A flat seven, A flat. B flat, C, E flat, and then finally over the D flat major seven. So that's and then the last bit of the tune we just have a two five one again in C minor seven, that's one complete. What we've already done. So just to begin with, I think it's really important that you do that, you know, load up a backing track or put a metronome on and just practice quarter notes for um, all the one, two, three, five patterns over the tune. Because when you can do that, that's when you can begin having fun making music. Now that you know how to apply these one, two, three, five patterns to tunes, I thought it'd be a good idea to show you how you can imply some interesting harmonic things using the uh, one, two, three, five patterns. So um, I've wrote out a lick on the article which I mentioned earlier. And um, this is over a C7 chord. 
And what basically um, happens here is I use a sequence of two major one, two, three, five pans, a one in C, then one in F, like that to start a lick. So the lick goes. So kind of a you know George Benson esque kind of a lick really, and um, that's a really cool way in which you can apply these patterns. So say if you've got any static chord really, or a chord for like you know a bar or two, a major seventh or a dominant seventh, I like to first go up the um, the one two three five of the chord in contact like C, and then I'll go up the one two three five of the chord which is a fourth above. Which is F, and of course it works really well if you've got something like um, half a bar of each dominant seven chord, like that's a really nice little line which you can use. And of course that substitution lends itself well to um, shorter harmonic devices such as triads. So say again, if you were doing C to F, you could do the one, two, three, five pattern, or maybe just, uh, sorry, the static C chord, the one, two, three, five pattern, or you could do C to an F as well. So that's a really cool thing that you can do when you're applying um, these one, two, three, five patterns over a major chord to a static major chord. Another really cool thing you can do is um, say if you, I'll give you an example of a say a minor seven chord, yeah you can use a diatonic one, two, three, five, but you can also go up the harmonized um, major scale. So C minor seven, if I think of that as being a two chord, then it comes from B flat major. So something that I like to do is, um, use this really cool um, horizontal pattern up and next. I'm going C minor, D minor, E flat, F. And that's brought me to blues land, the uh, eighth fret of the uh, guitar neck. So there I'm just going at the harmonized scale. You know, you could start a B flat. And do the same kind of thing. So that's a really cool thing, especially if you're playing something like Impressions. If you've got all these other nice little tetrachords available, you know, it gives you greater harmonic potential. <laughs> Thank you for checking out this jazz guitar video lesson. If you enjoyed the lesson, please click the like button below and subscribe to this channel for more free jazz and blues guitar lessons. See you in the next lesson.